All right. So we're going to start off today with just a little bit of a warm up. Um, we're going to do two problems. So I'm going to write both on the board. And I'm going to have you guys work on them on your own, kind of like a warm up for a math class. And then we'll go over them together. So let's start with some warm up problems and go from there. So, first one. Number one, can you guys see that? Good? Do I need to make it bigger? Okay, number one is 324 and 2 tenths minus 197 and 8400. Okay, so that's number one. Number two will be 0 and 168. That's a terrible 8. Divided by 2400. Okay, so we've got two problems there. I'll give you three or four minutes to work on that. If you finish up, keep your answers to yourself. You can just check them when we go over them. No need to put them in the chat. There you go. Mr. Turner's putting the numbers in the uh, thing, too, if you need it. Can't read it very well. Can you do a division sign? I don't know. I don't think. I don't know if you're going to be able to either. But if you do the slash. Okay. Just like division, yeah. Leave about one more minute on the warm up and then we'll go over them. Alrighty. So, is there anybody that wants to volunteer to walk me through the first one? Charlie? All right, hang on. Give me one second. Let me write the other one over here so I can. All right. Okay, Charlie. Go ahead. Tell me how to do this. We're subtracting. Line up the decimals first. Yeah, we gotta line up our decimals first. So we have 197 and 84 hundredths. Okay, good. And we're subtracting. Now what? Uh, put a line through the three and put a two above it and put a one by the two and then put 11 above it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do all of our borrowing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, and then don't get our placeholder zero. Everything except for like the zero, but you put a one by the zero. Good, so we need to borrow all the way over, right? So our three becomes mm -hmm. a two, our two becomes a 12, so that 12 becomes an 11 because this four needs to become a 14, 
14 becomes 13. 13. And then this 12, when you borrow, becomes an 11. And the 10, zero becomes a 10. Does that look good to you guys? Yeah. Good. All right, so then we have 10 minus 4 is 6. Mm -hmm. 11 minus 3, 8. 11 minus 8 is 3. Mm -hmm. Drop Bring down our decimal. Good. 13 minus 7 is 6. Mm -hmm. 11 minus 9 is 2. Mm -hmm. And 2 minus 1 is 1. Good. So good. Uh, thumbs up. How'd you guys do on that one? Oh, I can't see this. There we go. Doing good? Awesome. Is there anybody else that wants to volunteer to tell me how to do number two? This one's a little bit trickier. No? All right. I'll walk us through number two. So we have 168,000 divided by 2,400. So we have our house where our decimals live. The first number always goes in the inside. So we have zero and 168,000. And our second number goes on the outside, 2,400. Then we have that decimal song that I sang last week. I'm not going to sing it right now because that, nope, just not happening. Um, but we need to bounce the ball to the wall first, which means we take the ball, the decimal, as our ball on the outside and bounce it on the inside or to the wall. So we're bouncing it one place value, two place values. So if I bounce it twice on the outside, you have to make sure you bounce it twice on the inside. Whatever you do to the outside, do to the inside. So we need to move this decimal one, two places on the inside. And then the last part of the rhyme is to throw it on the roof. Okay, so now we essentially have the problem 24 into 168 with our decimal right here. Okay? You don't have to rewrite it if you don't want to, but sometimes it's nice to clean it up. I got the answer. Well, hang on. Give me I just got the answer. All right. First, we need to do the long division one. So 24, we need to ask ourselves, does it go into one? It does nope. not, so we don't put anything there. Does 24 go into 16? Nope. Nope, nothing there. So that means it has to go on to 168 yeah. somehow. Um, what is the answer? How many times? Seven. Good. It is seven. Does it go in exactly seven times? Yep. Good. So we do our subtraction. So our answer here is seven tenths. Would it still be the same number if I put a zero in front of it? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it still is. Still is the same thing. Adding a zero won't change the value. How'd you guys do on that one? Eh, not good. Some of you guys did good. These ones are a little bit harder when you have to bounce it twice. So maybe we'll do some more practice on that with dividing, okay? Um, I would so say it's harder to bounce it twice. Like it's still the same. It's just that like that if it only goes into like the third one, like not the First or second one. Mm -hmm. So that's our warm up. We're still going to do dividing decimals with our lesson today, but now we're going to start some word problem stuff. So I'm going to share my screen. I have a PowerPoint that we're going to go over. It, um, I posted it on Schoology, so you don't need to like take the notes if, if you don't want to. Um, but the PowerPoint we're going to use is on Schoology. If you ever need it, you can go pull it up. It's in our math folder under week three. Sound good? Cool. So I'm going to pull it up on my screen. We're going to go through it. We'll do some practice, and then you guys will go do some practice on your own. All righty. Thumbs up. Can you see my screen? Cool. So we are going to do this decimal PowerPoint. Skip that slide. So let's talk about addition first. When we're adding decimals and we're talking about word problems, there's some key words that are going to be pretty important with that. I'm just going to move forward and sit like this. Okay. So our most important words, oh, sorry. Um, addition is finding the total or the sum. This word, sum, is super important. It's 
when you talk about the sum of a problem, you're talking about an addition problem. So the sum is the answer to an addition problem. So if it says find the sum of eight and six, you're gonna add together eight and six. So the sum is adding, okay? Some other words that you might see in a word problem are gonna be add, all together, both, combined, how many, increase, join, plus, sum, together, and total. And the words that are yellow are the ones that you kind of see the most often. So find the total of this much money and this much money, or all together, how much money did this person spend? So those types of word problems are gonna use, or addition word problems are most likely gonna use those words, all together, sum, and total. But you might see some of these other ones as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep going. Keep in mind that this is on Schoology, so if you're taking the notes, you can always go to Schoology and look at it, or we're recording this, you can always go back and rewatch it too. So the next one, subtraction. So we're taking stuff away. Taking one number away from another one is subtracting. The, uh, oh, they didn't write it on here. Interesting. Um, the main word that you might see for subtraction, so the answer to a subtraction problem is the difference of something. So find the difference of eight and six. So you would do eight minus six. So I don't know why that one's not on there, but find the difference is a really big one. I'll add that to the PowerPoint when we're done. So it's on, it'll be on Schoology. Um, but some other words that are important that you'll see in subtraction is going to be deduct, detract, decrease by, leftover, less than, minus, reduce, remains, remove, subtract, take away, and how many left. So some of the most important ones there are going to be minus and take away. I also think how many left is another big one. Like, how much money do they have left over? That's a big one, too, because a lot of the real world word problems we talk about have to do with money because we use money every day. It's decimals. Um, so we use a lot of money examples on this. Okay. Our next one, multiplication. Um, well, yeah, the basic underlying principle of multiplication is repeated addition, um, but we also know how to multiply the standard way, so let's use that instead of repeated addition. Um, one of the, a few of the words that are important, probably one of the most important ones is the product right here. Um, the product is the answer to a multiplication problem. Problem. So if we say find the product of eight and six, you will multiply eight times six, okay? Some other big words are as much, by, like multiplied by, equal groups, groups of, lots of, multiplied by, per, per is another big one, um, like miles per hour, things like that is gonna be some multiplication stuff. The product of, and then times. I think times is a big one too. I don't know why that one's not highlighted. Um, this times this is pretty big as well, but again, we'll probably use money a lot for these examples. It's just a big, uh, money's a really big real world thing that we all use every day. So it's a big deal to practice how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide the money side of things. Okay. And then our last one, division, dividing things, um, to divide, you're splitting them into the equal parts, um, or fair sharing, so sharing something fairly, like the chocolate, or the cost of the bill at a restaurant. Although, in my opinion, you should um, pay for your own food, not other people's. So, <laughs> I have a different opinion on that, but that's an opinion, not how you split things equally. Now, um, some of the big words. The biggest one here is quotient. That's a big one. Find the quotient means that you are finding the answer to a division problem. So, quotient is a big one. The other big ones are the average divide, each splitting something into equal parts, evenly, multiplied by should not be there, um, every out of, which is like every this out of this, uh, the quotient, finding a ratio, shared equally or split. So those are some good ones, except for the multiplied by, ignore that. I think that might've been copy and pasted, not very well, but that's all right. Um, so those are some big, words that we'll use with identifying um, division problems. What else we got here? Oh, multi-digit just means there's more than one digit in a number. 
So 123 is a multi-digit number. There's three digits, not just one. Multi-digit number. And then there's some cute monster numbers. I did not make this PowerPoint. Just throwing that out there. Sometimes they're weird. Um, we know what a decimal is. It's the point or the dot used to separate the whole number from the fractional part. So we have our whole number, which is always on the left side of your decimal. And then on the right side of your decimal is the, uh, the fractional part, like the tenths, the hundredths, all of those parts. So there's some good, a good example, your place value here. So the seven is in the ones place, the one is in the tens, and then you have your decimal. The five is in the tenths, the nine is in the hundredths, and the one is in the thousandths. Those th at the end is what makes it um, the part of the decimal, not the whole number. So keep that in mind. Uh, next part, reasonableness. So when we're talking about uh, decimals and estimating and things like that, you kind of have to think about if your answer makes sense. So something along the lines of, does 2 plus 5 equals 113? Does it make sense at all? Um, your answer should be no, because we know it's 7. So we know that it's not 113. So if we're adding decimals and we're estimating decimals, and suddenly we end up with the answer of 113 when you try to add together 2 and 5, you probably miss a decimal point somewhere. So it's saying, is it reasonable? Should you have a decimal somewhere in the middle of your answer? Something along those lines, OK? And our last thing, I think it's the last thing, estimating. We talked about it last week a little bit. Um, we're trying to find a value that is close to the right answer. So we're kind of guessing what's close to the right answer. Um, we actually have more of about 20 students in our class. But a good example would be there's about 30 students in this class. We're rounding to the closest number. Um, we have exactly 23 students in our class. So if we were to round and estimate, we would probably go, if we round to the closest five, we would probably go, we have about 25 students in our class. Okay? So I think that's the end of our PowerPoint. Yep, we won't go any farther. Um, I know that was quick, but like I said, um, this is just some words that are going to be helpful for you, and it's all on... Um, Schoology. This PowerPoint's already up on Schoology for you, so you can always go pull it up whenever you would like to. Um, how are we doing so far? Making some sense? Some more problems? Okay, so we're going to do four practice problems um, together. So I have a uh, Google Doc right here that has four problems. We're going to read it, decide which operation we're going to use, whether we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. And then we're going to actually do the problems together. Um, I might have you do the math on your own, and we'll see if we're right. But after that, you'll have some independent practice <coughs> Sorry, on Google Classroom. And uh, I'll set you free after that. So let's start with our first one. I'm going to have to go back and forth between the board and the PowerPoint, or the Google Doc, but that's all right. I'm going to zoom in on it, too, real quick. So let's start with number one. It says, Jessica has $85.75 in her bank account. And then she wrote a check for $45.68. What is her final balance? So um, I can't see you guys. You might need to unmute to give me an answer here. But she has $85 and she writes a check. So thinking about money, if you're writing a check to someone, are you losing money or gaining money? What do you think? Losing. You are losing your money. Losing. So if you're losing money and you're giving someone money, what operation am I using? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Subtracting. subtracting. Good. We're going to subtract here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to my um, board instead. Um, why don't you guys take... Oh, wait. Let me put it back up. So we're going to do 85.75. Minus 45 and 67 hundredths. So why don't you guys take a minute and work on that. I'm going to get it written on my board, and then we will uh, solve it together. But 
See if you can figure that out. Don't write, don't yell out the answer though. Keep it to yourself. Alrighty, I think you guys got enough time. So let's just talk through this problem. The first thing we need to do is line our decimals up. You don't want to do this without lining your decimals up. Luckily, this one just lines up for you. And then we need to subtract. We can't do 5 minus 7, so we need to make sure we borrow. So the 7 becomes a 6, the 5 becomes a 15, and we can do 15 minus 7, which is 8. Then we have 6 minus 6, 0. Drop down your decimal. Then we have 5 minus 5, which is again 0. And then we have 8 minus 4, which is 4. So Jessica has $40. Oops, not 80 cents. And 8 cents left in her bank account. How'd you guys do on that one? Good? Yeah. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Awesome, good. So there's one example of a problem. I'm gonna switch back over to my Google Doc and we'll read through that problem and set it up and then I'll let you guys work on it. So our second problem, once it shares. There we go. Number two, Tiffany had a balance of $12.45 and then deposited the $65 she earned babysitting. What is her account balance now? So again, we're talking about money. This is our keyword here. She deposits money. Who knows what it means to deposit money? I don't know. Anyone else? What does it mean if you deposit money? There's two things you can do at a bank. You can withdraw the money or you can deposit it. What do you guys think? Save it. Good. I heard uh, Talisha, you, uh, Mr. Turner said you wrote it in there. It means you're giving money to your bank account, which is right. You're adding the money to your account. So if we're adding money to our account, what operation should we use? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? What do you guys think? Good. In the chat, you guys are saying add, which is correct. So on this one, if we were to write it out, it would be $12.45 plus $65. So go ahead and work on that one for maybe a minute. Um, make sure you line up your decimals. This one can get tricky if you don't line up your decimals. At least I'm getting it. Okay, keep your answer to yourself for now. Give me about 30 more seconds and then we'll go over this one. I can't see you guys say you're done. Let's go ahead and go over this one. Um, one of the biggest things that I see that is a mistake that some of you guys make with problems like this is that when you do this, you put the 65 below here and you add. Can anybody tell me what would be wrong with that? 
Huh? Why would this not be right? I know everybody really cheat off of it. It just says. <laughs> I don't know why it would do that. Okay, um, usually it's not backwards. Fifty-six. Oh, is it because I'm presenting still? I'm pretty sure that's why. Hang on. Okay, now is it normal? Yeah. 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 Okay. So now let's try that again. If, because um, for me it always looks backwards on my screen, so I never know. Um, why would it not be correct if I put the 65 under the 45? What's wrong with that? It's the wrong place value. It's the wrong place value. Good. So we have the 65. We need to remember the decimals at the end of a six or mm -hmm. of a five of a whole number. So we got to line up our place values and add our placeholder zeros. Then we can add, and I saw the answers in there, so we have five, four, and seven started. So I do not remember the person's name, but now she has $77.45 in her bank account, which is good. She's moving up, She's making that money. All righty. Let's go ahead, and we have two more problems. So I'm going to present again and hopefully not forget to unpresent. <laughs> And uh, let's do number three. Alrighty, number three says, every day on his way to and from school, Milo walks three and 6,500 miles total. So all together on his way to and from, he walks three and 6,500 miles. If he walks to school for five days, how many miles will he have walked? So are there any keywords in here that tell us what operation we're going to use? I can't see you guys. You might have to say stuff out loud. How many? How many? So how many miles? So could that be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? What does it tell you, you think? Adding. So we could add. So we could add 3 and 65 hundredths together for each day that he walks. So we could do... 3.65 plus 3.65 plus 3.65 plus 3.65. I think there's one more, right? We could add it together five times, but what's the quicker way to do that? Multiplication. We could multiply instead. So that's what we're going to do. You could, if you wanted to, add them all together. It just might take a little bit longer, but if you're more comfortable with adding, that's totally good. We're going to do 3 and 6,500 times the five days that he walks. So go ahead and take a minute to work that one out. And keep the answer to yourself. Don't write it in the chat just yet. We'll go over it. I'm going to stop presenting at this time. All right, again, I'm seeing a few of you guys finish. We'll do another 15 seconds, and then I will go over it. Okay, I think that's about 15 seconds. I didn't count. I'm just guessing. So we just need to multiply to see how far he walks total in one week of going to school. So we do... Uh, you leave your decimal alone until the very end, and we'll move it at the end. So 5 times 5 is 25. Carrier 2. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. Carrier 3. And then 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. So our answer is 1,825 miles, right? What do you guys think? Yes, no? This is our answer? No, it's not answer. It's not our answer, but it says, but he walked like almost 2,000 miles. Why is that not the answer? Put a decimal between the eight and the two. Good. We need to uh, put our decimal. So remember back on the PowerPoint, it talked about the reasonableness of something.
So we need to even think about if it makes sense that five times basically three is almost 2,000. We know that's not true, so we need to make sure we count our decimal places. So when we're multiplying, we have one, two numbers behind our decimal. So we start at the end and we move it one, two places in, and this person walked 18 and 25 hundredths miles. So that's 18 and a quarter miles in a week. That's a lot, actually. <laughs> it's a far walk to and from school. I don't think I'd want to do that. I used to do that in high school. I used to have to walk like a mile and a half to and from high school. It was not my favorite until I got a car. And then it was all right. Um, so we have one more problem. This time, uh, there's only one operation left. So we can kind of guess what it's going to be, but we will talk about it too. All right, so our last one. A bag of oranges costs, uh, I almost said six, $7.65. Five friends want to share the bag. If each friend pays the same amount, how much will each friend pay? So we already know it's going to be division because we're doing one of each problem. We've done addition, we've done subtraction, and we've done multiplication. So we know we're going to divide, but how do I know what to divide? What by what? What do you guys think? Any ideas? Juliana, Juliana go ahead. The lower amount. So the lower amount divided by the bigger one? Or which way? So if we look at the numbers, are we doing $7.65 divided by 5 or 5 divided by 7.65? 7.65 divided by 5. Yeah, so we're taking... The money that we're uh, that needs to be spent and dividing it by the number of people that are spending money on it. So we're going to do seven dollars sixty-five cents. Now on this word document, um, there's no way to type a division sign, so I'm going to type a slash. Um, as you go through your math career, uh, through junior high and high school and stuff, this slash sign kind of represents a fraction bar, and it means division. So we're doing six dollars, sorry, seven dollars and sixty-five cents divided by five friends to see what it equals. So you guys go ahead, take a minute, solve that, keep your answers to yourself until we're all done. Seven dollars sixty-five cents. Divided by five. Okay, seven sixty five divided by five. We give about thirty more seconds. I think we're pretty good. So let's go ahead and do this one. Now, when we think about the decimal song, um, bounce the ball to the wall to divide, it means you're taking the decimal on the outside and moving it to the wall. But in this case, the decimal is already there because it's a whole number. So we don't actually need to bounce the ball anywhere. So if I don't do anything on the outside, you do not need to move the decimal on the inside. All you have to do is just move it straight up in your problem, and then divide like normal log division. So we do, does 5 fit into 7? We know it's one time. So we have our 1 on top, and we subtract 5 on the bottom. So and 7 minus 5 is 2. Then we need to drop down our 6. And we see 5, how many times does it go into 26? Which we know it's 5. So we have our 5 up here. 5 times 5 is 25, and we'll subtract 
So six minus five is one. And our last one, we drop down our five and we ask ourselves, how many times does five go into 15? We know it's three, so we put our three up top and we subtract our 15 and we get our zero. So each friend needs to spend $1.53 on this bag of oranges. Okay? How'd you guys do on that one? Thumbs up? Mm. Yeah. Thumbs up. Looking good, guys. Awesome. Okay, so that is all of the math lesson today. Um, while we were doing this on Google Classroom, I'm going to share my screen again. So on Google Classroom, I scheduled an assignment to go up during our class because I'm that good. Um, let's see, it's presenting. So in Google Classroom, if you're on our main screen and you go to classwork, let me get rid of that and that. Um, I posted a new math assignment down under math. It's called Independent Decimal Word Problem Practice. So you'll click on it, open it up, and it's just like the Google Forms that we have been doing. There are four problems where it asks you to identify which operation. So you need to tell me, um, in order to solve this problem, would you add, subtract, multiply, or divide? So you're going to do that for these four first problems. And then on the last four problems, you're actually going to solve these word problems. So find the sum, find the product, find the quotient, and find the difference. And if you don't remember what those mean, um, it's in the PowerPoints that we just talked about on Schoology, and it will also be in this recording when we, I get it put up in a little bit. So that's going to be your assignment for the day for math. Does that sound good to you guys? Even if it doesn't, you still got to go do it. So, yay. Um, so if you want to stay on and work on that assignment while we're all here, I'm going to stay on for another half hour. So I'll stay here until 1140. But you can either go work on that on your own or stay and work on it here. Um, I'm not going to do it with you guys here. I'm just going to be here. Uh, if, if you did not finish the ELA or the math from yesterday, go finish those two. Make sure you're all caught up on everything. The better you stay caught up, the better it's going to be. Okay? So either stay or head out, and I'll see you guys later. 12.30 for science. How do I take, take book tests? What? How do I take book tests? Oh, AR? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. I'll look into it. We've been getting emails, but I have not been reading them very thoroughly. So I'll look into it and put something on Google classroom about how to take those after I do, okay? Because I read like a whole bunch of Harry Potter books. I'm on the fifth one. This, cool. summer. this cool. summer I already read four of them, four Harry Potter books. Now I'm on the fifth one. That's awesome. Yeah. So I just 